We're back. Back, back, back. I was <laughs> looking at when it actually puts us live, and it actually put us live, like, the second you hit the button. I was always wondering if it has to cycle, and then when it says you're live, we're actually live, but it actually goes live immediately. I know what I'm doing. No, I'm, I didn't. I'm not saying you don't. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, we're back. We're back. <laughs> Took oh. a week off. Had some some time away from the house. Feels good to be back. It does. Except our AC units are they're not broken, but they're struggling to keep up with uh, the Atlanta heat. They're twenty something years old, so we're probably gonna have to get them replaced. But it's hot up in here. It's hot. So if you hear the faint sound of a fan, I we apologize because yeah. we're not turning it off. <laughs> Unless it just sounds terrible. Um, but it's real hot up here. It's probably 85, 86 degrees up here. Yeah. Phew. But we're hanging in there. We've got some cold drinks. Yeah, we got some cold drinks. we got three lights on us. <laughs> We've got, oh, you know it's going to make it hotter. Hot takes. Oh, we don't really have any I, don't, hot I was takes. like, oh, we have some pretty medium takes today, pretty, I think. Pretty mild takes <laughs> today. I wish. I wish. It's, it's the show with uh, hot temperatures <laughs> and even hotter takes. <laughs> oh, man. It's our very own hot ones. How is everyone doing? What have we missed over the past two weeks? What's up? Scroll up here. I think we actually got away with no news over the weekend. No major news. Normally, Something that's what happens. Happened. What was it? Was, was it a Marvel thing? I don't remember. I mean, the <laughs> Spider-Man trailer. That happened yesterday. That two happened days ago. After we got back. Anyways. Uh, Headbot, David Holt, Rayman, uh, Matthew West. Fino, Viero, oh, I'm sorry if I butchered that. Uh, Star Wars Dakota, Dan23, Doomslayer420. Ya boy. A ya boy. Isaac Yu, Tara Vive. What's up, everyone? Hello. Almost forgot to give you your, your, your weekly minifigs. Oh wait, the vision. Well, the visions trailer came out, but we had not left yet. Yeah, we did that. That nothing happened while we were like away from our house. So the curse is broken. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. I was supposed to be in vacation mode, and they still put out the visions trailer. They thought they thought we were gonna leave like a day early. They thought we were gone. We tricked them. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. Um, John Leeton, thank you so much for the super chat, but let me, let me read this. Prayers for my dog, Leia. She has a cute kidney failure, hoping for the best. Love the stream. Aww. Sorry will, about your dog. We will absolutely keep Leia in our oh, thoughts. God, thank you, John. <laughs> <laughs> we are sorry to hear that. I'm, I'm really sorry, John. That sucks. That's the worst. Having a... When your pets are in pain or suffering, it's it's like the worst. Because, you know, it's not a whole lot you can do for them. They do so much for us, though. Yeah. But thank you for the very generous super chat. I, hopefully... I hope you get some good news soon. Yeah, hopefully the stream lifts your spirits a little bit. we drink in? I've got canned wine. I've got a canned Mai Tai. Look at us. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. We, uh, you, you drink all of your shandies. You were, you were big into shandies at the pool. Yeah. I was big into letting other people make me cocktails. You were? Tony kept making me oh, okay. drinks. You, you kept making me margaritas, so... Yeah. I did not. I made like two margaritas. Hmm. <laughs> oh, what's up, Jesse? 
Not Star Wars, but how fun was that Far From Home trailer? Yes, I figured that would come up. Um, pretty, pretty awesome trailer. We didn't do a reaction, cause like it came out at 8 p.m. and we were already in bed. Yeah, well, <laughs> just to show you where, where we're at in life. We, so we didn't. I didn't watch the leaked one. Did you watch the leaked one? No, I heard that it was. That's it. Did happen while we were like the last day we were on vacation uh but i didn't watch it because i was like we're gonna react to this and then it came out officially and it was like 8 p.m and we were exhausted and already in bed and we were like let's just watch it we were like uh, we can talk about it maybe tomorrow and then tomorrow came which was yesterday and then we were just like mm, still tired still too tired we we gave ourselves a break because we were like marvel is our second channel <laughs> thing kinda so if it had been a Star Wars trailer then yes we would have sucked it up and <laughs> done something but I liked the trailer I I feel like I miss a little bit of like the smaller scale Spider-Man stories yeah we can react but... to it now kind of because this is what we were talking about is the whole yeah it, it... I, I understand why they're going bigger scale with Spider-Man because they do need to differentiate themselves from the previous two Spider-Man Spider iterations. Yeah. So like it does kind of make sense that they're like, all right, we've seen Toby's Spider-Man, Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man, and they were obviously much more like, yeah, your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man stories. And now they're going bigger because it's like they, they got to do something different. Yeah, it's now that the multiverse especially is a thing, it's to be expected. And I don't know, I, I feel like Doctor Strange is just going to be such a big part of this Spider-Man movie, which feels a little bit weird, but we're also going to get the other Spider-Man, and that's going to be really cool because well, I Well, that's am, not confirmed, but well, like, come on. I, I'm a huge Tobey Maguire Spider-Man fangirl. I mean, the multiverse so. is such a fun idea just for the fact that, like, any Marvel movie that's ever been made could technically be considered, like, part of the timeline within the, quote, canon and all. So that's, it's just fun. Um, and you, you don't have to be like, Toby's better than the MCU Spider-Man. It's because right. he is an MCU Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah, well, Kinda. I'm not saying he's be better. You can be I your like, favorite. I like Tom Holland a lot. Andrew Gar Garfield, meh. Maybe I just missed out on those movies. Like, I wasn't really into comic book movies when those were coming out. I don't really remember when they came out, but I think I wasn't paying attention when Andrew Garfield was Spider-Man. We but, watched them, but... But, like, the the older movies and the newer movies, I was like, yeah. No, the, the original Spider-Man movies are still fantastic. Like, it's just interesting seeing that like that spider-man couldn't do all those big things in the old movies because it's like they only had the rights to spider-man so it was like he's basically the only superhero in existence in those spider-man movies it'll yeah. be interesting to see ah oh, that would be fun if like he and andrew garfield get pulled into the mcu and they're like wait who are all these people <laughs> <laughs> before you have we help? go before we go any further Let's talk about our sponsor for today. Oh yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah. Uh, Patrick Pine is our Patreon sponsor for today's stream. Thank you so much, Patrick. He's a Jedi Master level patron. No, uh, it's a slideshow. Oh, okay. That that shows all of our Jedi Master and up patrons, right, but right. Okay. Patrick Pine specifically. Thank you, Patrick, <laughs> for sponsoring today's live stream. Um, and then. Real quick, let me read some super chats before we go into any more Spider-Man talk. This is Spider-Man Explained now. <laughs> I know Lawrence. not much about Spider-Man. Lawrence Fletcher wants you to name all of Gold Squadron. I think I've still done all of the ones that I can, unless Lawrence knows things that I don't. Uh, but Dutch Vander, uh, Tyree, Yvonne Verlaine. Oh, here we go. Now I forgot four. Crap. Or was it 
we forgot all the it's things been two weeks. that we knew about uh, Star Wars uh, while we were gone. Davish Pops Crail is gold five. No, I'm starting from scratch, I guess. <laughs> I was like, I've done this. Nope, I forgot everything. I did. I was uh, reciting the Chiss family names over the weekend just because, like, Dragon Con is coming up. And I'm like, that sounds like a question Daniel would ask. He loves Thrawn. And that's such a that's such a Daniel question. So I was like, I'm going to make sure I still have the uh, Chiss family names. And I do. Uh, Bodil, Chaff, Klar, Dasklo, Arizi, Myth, uh, Abic, Click, and Ufsa. So I can still do that. That's not what we asked for. Though. I know, but I'm z it's still impressive. <laughs> uh huh. Just saying, some things sunk in and stayed there. Who's this? Is this Wooher? No, we already built Wooher. Just put them together and see if you can. I was gonna. Oh wait, is this? Ah! Oh my god. Uh, is this Obi Wan? Well, who who did you? Who else did you build? Oh, this is Doctor Evazon. <laughs> his face. Oh, I was is gonna say. Is his face say, not messed up enough? Not enough. <laughs> um. Theral and Fiction is in the chat, so I want to real quickly oh. give them a shout out because we checked our P.O. box today and we got a little package. Alex is going to grab it. Yes, thank you, Theral. Sorry if we got this a while ago. We didn't check it before we left, but... Uh, and I actually didn't... So Theral sent us a couple of the free comic book day comics, which I did not go and get this uh, because our nearby comic store was closed. Uh, so thank you for sending that to me. I, I haven't had a chance to look at it yet. He sent a Buffy comic from Molly. It's a, it's Buffy and Firefly, I think. It's a little combination, but Buffy's in it. He's That's specifically because of Buffy. And also a Turtles comic for SFC Pruitt. <laughs> Where is SFC Pruitt? May he always be with us. We got Turtles. Thank you, Theral. <laughs> but yeah, I need to look through the Edge of Balance because I, I haven't done that yet. Oh, this guy. Can't can't escape him. Shouldn't he be relaxing? He sh definitely shouldn't be watching this stream. Yeah, what are you doing? Um, Real quick, I'll jump and read this one. Templin Institute, thank you for the super chat. Uh oh. Hey, hey, what's that thing on the legger? Le the legger? The Lego snow speeder behind you. We did look. You know. We did look a little bit for something that may have been hidden in our office by <laughs> Templin. What is it? It's, a, it's not nearly as bad as I thought it would be. <laughs> it's a Templin pin. Oh. We That's can put, actually really, really nice. We can put that on. Uh, one of our Dragon Con passes uh -huh. that we're not going to wear <laughs> on our person. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. This is, yeah, this is a nice pen. We should make pens. <laughs> yeah, the Templin Institute, if people didn't know, the Templin Institute is in town uh, and oh, came and focus on stayed that. with us for. <laughs> Don't you need to, like. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. They know what it looks yeah. like. So Mark stayed with us for a couple days and. I'm not convinced that's the only thing he hid in here, but... It's true. We, uh... <laughs> th this was... This is... This is a nice... Uh, I, I feel like this isn't the only thing that's hidden in here, though. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. We got a nice big box That's of, too nice. <laughs> we got a nice big box of, uh... His business cards, though, to keep in our guest yeah. room. It's funny, I did like, I, I looked all over that, but I, I didn't look at the snow speeder. I looked inside the Ark of the Covenant. We looked through this whole bookshelf and completely missed the pin. We didn't look that hard. No. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. <laughs> all right, let me go back up here. Read the super chats that we got in earlier. Matt McDonald. Thanks for the super chat. Hello, what was your favorite part of today's gallery? 
As a musician slash audio producer, for me, it was the way they completely synthesized Luke's voice. Shocked emoji. Yeah. Same. That was pretty cool. I, I don't, and I don't know that that was my favorite part, but that was wild to hear about. Uh, and we, we were talking about that with Mark over the weekend about whether or not that was Mark Hamill's voice or not. And I just assumed that he pitched his voice differently. That I knew that like, it, he's a voice actor. He could probably do that. And nope. I knew that he couldn't just like make his voice sound young again. But I feel like they. I thought maybe they would have used a little bit of his voice. I, I figured it was his voice with some filters. Not that it was completely synthesized. That's crazy. Yeah. It was pretty wild. Uh, my favorite part, though, is just all the Grogu stuff. Of course. Well, Molly just kept saying, I miss him every time he showed up. I saw some people talking about the fact that it was either Dave or John said that that scene with Luke is the culmination of a two season arc about the journey of this child. Mm -hmm. And people are like, maybe Grogu's not coming back. And I'm like, no, no, no. He's, uh, he's still. I I know which part you're talking about, and that did make my ears perk up. But Dave, Dave Filoni said like the journey, as in like the journey's not over. I I take it as I, I still hear um, Pedro Pascal saying we're going to see each other again. I promise. Like that is. I think they might be separated for a little while, but. It's the journey's not over. I agree. Um, what was my favorite part today? I liked seeing the look on Mark Hamill's face holding Grogu. I mean, I was just like, this is this is dreams coming true right here. Every, everyone has the same reaction to Grogu. Ooh, and also I I tweeted about this, but John Favreau talking about having the same reaction to R2 that I had, mm, which was- That he, was good. Which he basically was like, I didn't start tearing up and get super excited until R2 came in or like until Dave mentioned that R2 could be there. And I was like, me too. I, yeah. I mean, I love just knowing who people's favorite characters are, be they major or minor. And I do think that R2 is, that counts as a major character. So I, I really enjoyed that learning John Favreau's like favorite childhood character is really nice. Um, I also liked all the Plo Koon stuff. Mm. Maybe I mean we're a little biased from that. Like, I was actually surprised by all that because I was like because Katie Sackoff mentioned that during the Ampar stream what was that four or five months ago, but I didn't really think March. much of it. I was like, oh, they probably told people a bunch of different names, but like there was concept art yeah. made and like a digital Plo Koon head put on the body and I was like man they really leaned into that. Seeing all that was super fun and like uh, yeah I guess it's, it's part of that is bias because we like not that we meant to or we're asking any leading questions but we like broke that story mm -hmm. and then didn't even think that it was that big of a deal we were like what a neat detail and then so many articles got written about that <laughs> so uh, that was like a fun thing that happened from that stream. And then to see that, oh, it was more than just well, saying I, I it's wonder, Blow Coon. They, they actually did all this work. I wondered when people started putting out articles about that, I wondered at the time if there had been any leaks about Blow Coon and then people would maybe would, were like, that can't be right. And then after Katie Sackhoff said something about it, they're like, oh, all right, we're going to put this story out because then it's probably true that they were at least told about this character being this person. Oh, well, people on the Star Wars Leaks subreddit today were talking about the, you know, the, the concept art, which I thought was super cool uh, and why I included, included it in this thumbnail. But they were like, I thought we heard some leaks about Plo Koon in season two and everyone was like that can't be uh <laughs> but like i love that dave filoni had that foresight and was like people will really latch on to that if if they hear it they'll be like no that makes sense dave filoni loves plo Koon. Mm -hmm. and so we'll like we'll run with that and they won't they'll just like run away from the real story <laughs> i thought that was a fun detail 
Although, I was thinking earlier today, I was like, what if there were people working on the show that are big enough fans, like us, who were like, wait, Plo Koon, really? That doesn't make any sense. What? Like, I, I can't imagine working on the show and like seeing that little detail and being like, okay, yeah, whatever. I would be like, hold on. How, what, how, what? I've been trying to think of what my reaction would have been if the hood came off and it were Plo Koon. I mean, and obviously be... they wouldn't have done all the stuff with the green lightsaber and the hilts and yeah. I'd be cetera. psyched, but I'd be like... I, like, I think I would have... It probably would have been similar to me hearing Palpatine's cackle in the Rise of Skywalker trailer. I probably would have been like, oh my god, and then been like, wait, what? <laughs> like, excitement first, and then... But I, I think I would have bought into it and been like, I mean, he can survive the vacuum of space. He does that in the Clone Wars. He could have survived an explosion, I guess. If like, Maul can survive exactly. being cut in half, That's the whole is thing. possible. That's the thing with Maul. So, I think that would have been a fun reveal, but only for a select few people. Like, even Peyton Reed was like, yeah, they, the script said it was Plo Koon, who's like Someone a... Someone from yeah, the Clone Wars, He's like I a think. Jedi from the prequel era, I think. Like, it didn't sound like Peyton Reed knew who that was, and that's fine. Uh, that's not a judgment on him. But even some of the creators would have been like, who's this now? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's like, it's like watching Jon Favreau in the first season of The Gallery. He's talking about how, like, oh, we got this character IG-11 who looks like IG-88. It's like, that's a deep cut. Mm -hmm. It's like, not, not to anyone who's spent more than a few months in the Star Wars fandom. Like, yeah. everyone loves the bounty hunters first. That's like the first thing you you learn. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, that was. I'm sure we'll talk more about the episode, but those were some of our favorite parts. <laughs> I was kind of like, I, I was like, that was okay. I wish it had more about the whole season. And Alex was like, they had one yeah. about the whole season, and I had forgotten about it. And I was like, well, still, <laughs> this one was all about Luke. Blah. And even that, like, plays into the whole, like, we're trying to keep it secret, so we're not even going to do the behind the scenes on it until months later. Yeah. So I appreciate all that. that I they're, they're going to such lengths to, to surprise us. Uh, to completely go in a different direction, Caleb Diaz, thank you so much for your super chat. Okay, are they teasing a Ted and Rebecca romance? <laughs> well, let's get to the real issues <laughs> here. Uh, Ted Lasso, everybody, is really good this season yeah i really did love the the latest episode if you haven't seen ted lasso yeah, we, they keep making star wars jokes there were none in the last two episodes but the first the first one had like the first one had three two or, yeah two and the second three. one had at least one so it's like they're building up a a bank so that we're allowed to talk about this show that's yeah. that's what i assume they're doing they're like we really want star wars explained to talk about our show, so let's slip in a couple of Boba Fett references. Mm -hmm. I I agree with Rain Man. I think so, but I don't want it. Like they might be teasing it, but I don't. The, they're not a romantic match in my head, and I'm sure they're they're gonna play it as like a a joke. There it's, was something it's about like when Leslie matches with Tom, but mm. it's one of his like nerdy side accounts right. or whatever. Yeah. There was something in season one, though, that made me wonder if they were going to go that route, and I was like, mm, I don't... I like their friendship. Yeah, um, I do too. I still think that it could be a red herring. I, I, I think they're definitely leading us to believe uh, that it's about Rebecca and Ted. Yeah. What? Harrison Alexander said, now Sam and Rebecca is something I can get behind. Who's Sam? Sam, the the footballer. Oh, they they have a good rapport too. Yeah, I, I agree. I just, like, the thought of the two of them getting together was funny. I agree. Um, they do have a good rapport. But, I don't know, the way they cut to it in the episode, I was like, I'm kind of on board for it. 
But maybe that's because, because my initial thought was, she's texting with Rupert. And that's what I'm more scared of. I feel like if they, if Ted and Rebecca find out they've been messaging each other, they'll be like, oh, well, we can talk our way through this and that's fine. Yeah. It'd be much more devastating if Rebecca is like falling in love with Rupert again. Like yeah. that's awful. I thought that the twist was going to be that it was Nate because Aww. they were focusing so much on him in that episode too, mm. which I thought that was a gr- great episode for him, but... I agree with um, uh, Rachel in the chat. I just want Nate to get a girlfriend. Or like, Nate seems to be having some trouble right now and he's probably feeling like he's maybe gonna be replaced because Mm. of Roy coming on and I don't know, I just, I want Nate to be happy. I I want everyone on that show to be happy, except for Rupert. But Nate's, Nate had like kind of an attitude to start this season off. He has. He's been kind of mean. He has, and I think they need to address that. Um, but I still thought it was a good ep- episode for him, and I think that that like that cockiness that came with his new. Uh... Someone said, "What are we talking about?" <laughs> We're Sorry. talking about Ted Lasso. <laughs> we'll move on in a second. Uh, Ted Lasso is the best thing on TV right now because the Bad Batch isn't on anymore, so I can legally say that. <laughs> <laughs> legally. <laughs> Seriously, though, Ted Lasso Ted is Lasso amazing. Ted Lasso is better than The Bad Batch. It is. I'm going to say is. that, I'm... legal or otherwise. <laughs> Ted Lasso is amazing. I'm sorry if that angers anyone, but I... I'm n- you're not wrong. <laughs> That's why I was putting the caveat there. <laughs> yeah. The joke of, like, The Bad Batch isn't on anymore. But if you haven't seen it, watch Ted Lasso. It's on Apple plus tv mm-hmm. apple, TV, apple tv plus something apple tv whatever apple tv <laughs> there's too many why, why has everyone got to have a plus on it which That's... we weren't going to invest in apple tv until we heard about ted lasso and everybody was raving about it and now i'm like we okay, got the free whatever. trial yeah what other shows are we missing out on from apple tv well the only other thing i've watched on that is the expanse which is also phenomenal that's true but anyways we'll move on <laughs> Um, what show is this? The, <laughs> Theral, Let's get back to Spider-Man. <laughs> Theral on Fiction, thanks to the super chat. New Star Wars Lego trailer just came, and uh, five Marvel IGN. Five, uh, new Marvel game? Uh, the, the I watched the trailer for it just because I was waiting for the Lego Star Wars one. I didn't watch it. Uh, I heard. I, I forget I what it's called. Something about moons, moon soldiers, or oh yeah, I saw people tweeting about it, but I haven't watched the trailer for it. But yeah, the the Lego Star Wars trailer looked great, although it looked pretty much exactly what I thought it would look like. So it, there were no surprises, which I don't really expect surprises from Lego games. But you know, I'm a little bummed that it's gonna take a whole nother year plus, year plus for it to come out, but we'll, we'll have other stuff to keep us busy, especially next year for, for Star Wars things. But honestly, the Outlast trailer <laughs> footage- Hold on, I haven't talked to I was gonna get to Outlast. The Outlast trailer got me more excited than the Lego You didn't Star even Wars. see all that. I, I just I told care. you it existed and you got excited. I was watching it when you had it on and I was like, yeah, spooky game. Spooky games. Um. So let's see, the Lego Star Wars trailer. Yeah, like, you kind of know what to expect. It made me laugh, which is what I want. I love the Lego Star Wars sense of humor. I don't know why, but Qui-Gon being like, train him, you will train him. (laughs) That's what he does. I had to do that for comedy's sake. Uh, I I loved that part. And I like the idea that it's open world-ish, it looks like, that you can pop around in the galaxy. That looks super fun. Um, yeah, it, it didn't surprise me. I think everyone was mostly watching it for the release date, and it'd be like, ah, spring, sp- spring 2022. Okay, all right, fine. Like, at least we have, I don't know, a four-month window, three-month window. But I wonder if there's, like, a specific reason for that, or if they're just pushing it because the game needs more work. Like I'm one. There, I think that there shouldn't be any like story reason for the push, but I'm wondering if <laughs> yeah, there is. Yeah, they're trying to break the story. How does it end though? Um, I, I think that it had to do with 
the WB sale. I read that a couple times because mm, yeah, I, is it Titan Games? The the company that owns Lego Star Wars is owned by Warner Brothers, and then Warner Brothers was going through this whole sale period, and so the game might have just been like held at ransom almost, or just put on hold until the sale was final. Mm-hmm. So. I, I think that's probably what happened, but I don't know. That's just something I read. Could be way off base. I mean, I, I guess that makes sense. But, yeah. It's a but it does, it's also to be fair, like, it, it does seem to have a ton of features. Yeah, the game looks awesome. It looks like it has the mechanics that people wished were going to be in the in Battlefront 2. Which I, I remember being in the meeting and people were like, but can you take a ship and like land it in the different planets? And I was like, why does that matter? But people were like, really? Like, I want to be able to be in a ship and land on this planet they and were then go to about, a next planet. They were ta- talking about going from a planet to a ship and back. Not about going into hyperspace. It's very different. Well, isn't that what we saw in the Lego trailer? I'm a little bit just joshing you, but... They they're, they're, they were talking about a specific mode from the original Battlefront games where it's like you're oh. fighting in a system and so like you're fighting on the, on the ground but you want to go and like attack a Star Destroyer so you get into a ship and then you fly up and do that. This is why I wasn't very helpful so in those meetings. It's not like an open but world game. But yeah. I did I did guess a, a mechanic for Fallen <laughs> Order during one of those uh, super uh, special elite private meetings for us game changer. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but in a game changer event, I did see footage of. Was it BD1 it, hacking? Yeah, I saw footage of. This was like really early on, and I saw footage of BD1 jumping on the back of a, a KX droid to like hack into it which is a mechanic in the game. And I was like, oh, well, that's interesting. Are you, can you do that in the game? And the guy was like, Just, I, pretend you didn't see that. I don't know. <laughs> that was their mistake. I don't think that it was a big deal, but I was like, screw all y'all gamers in this yeah, room. Yeah, you caught something. You caught something no one else did. I saw that. <laughs> Anyways, we were going off so many tangents. Well, we're having canned wine and canned rum, so... Uh, the, oh, the Marvel game. I oh. I don't know. Okay, but Outlast. <laughs> uh, I love the Outlast games. Um, like, survival horror games are very... I don't love horror movies, but I do like horror games. And the fact that I can drag my friends the blunder dome into a four person survival horror oh, that yeah. is as scary i it better be as scary as Next the other Halloween outlast is games. gonna be off the chain because i don't care if our that's friend a super zach old saying. hates scary games and i'm gonna make him play it and it's gonna be hilarious i'm very excited for outlast Mid- midnight sun the outlast trials game. oh midnight sun okay midnight suns i don't know Yes, Outlast, very excited. I'm, I'm super psyched for that. Uh, John Leeton, thanks for another super chat. What is Darth uh, Nihilus' home planet? Oh god. Uh, Ni- Nihiliston. <laughs> He's not a species. I know. Not named after. I'm kidding. Um, but I don't know the answer. So, uh, is it Malachor Five? I don't think it is. No, that was something different. That uh, was it Malachor Five. I don't know. Malachor Five. I'm positive that's wrong. But <laughs> oh boy, are we ready for Dragon Con trivia or what? That's Legends. It's okay. I can be wrong about that. <laughs> Although did Nihilus, 
I think he might have been name dropped in the Rise of Skywalker visual dictionary, so. RD Film says that Zach will not play the new Atlas. Yeah, he will. We'll see about that. If I have anything to say about yeah. it, he absolutely will. He absolutely will. I still need I still need to plan some stuff for for soon. Yeah, we're just over a month away from October. I might have to just lose the schmo down on purpose so that I don't have to worry about studying and I can worry about Twitch streaming instead. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. You're just trying to lull me into a false sense of security. You already have a false sense of security. What's that mean? You've got... You've got... All the history of having the bell for so long. And it's Alex Damon. It's, it's going to blow through the tournament. I've never once said that. Everyone else says no, that. No, no, I, I know. That's what everybody else is saying. I'm saying. How dare you? No way. Jose. Did we just film our promo? <laughs> <laughs> yep. No way, Jose. That's what I say about that. Gotcha. It's going to be funny when we do our promo, because like, I feel like Nerd Chronic is going to... He's got so much B-roll of me trashing on you. That's true. He's always lurking in streams and stuff. I'm sure he's just clipping things. I'm, well, I'm sure Jake is happily going through old POV streams and being like, this is good, this is good, here's this, take this. And I'm going to be really nice to you. Well, and now I'm like, oh, we're just going to have fun with it. It's going to be fun. But then <laughs> Nerd Chronic's going to put all my Alex bashing clips mm -hmm. in there, which is fine. Oh, I don't know that we got Darth Nihilus's oh, home planet. Oh, we totally didn't get that right. John, you have stumped me unless I got it right, and then I knew it the whole time. Someone will tell us in the chat. I'm sure someone did. So well done. <laughs> um, while we wait on the planet name, Dragonus Prime, thanks for it's the super chat. It's your boy. Wrong. It's your dude. That's rude. <laughs> they say, it's your dude. <laughs> if there were, were a hypothetical extra season of the Clone Wars, what character without an arc already, i.e. not Maul, mm. would you want to get one? Mm. Typo. Or Panaka. Oh. Ooh, yeah. Either one of them would be really fun. Panaka might have been the more interesting choice, especially considering where he ends up in Leia, Princess of Alderaan. So, I will say Panaka, but I would have also settled for Typho. Or both of them together. That would have been fun. Like, they just... Hmm. They, they were interesting characters, and Typho would have been Panaka if Hugh Corshi came back for this, the sequels to the phantom menace mm -hmm. so I, I think panaka would have been really fun to explore oh t uh, darth nihilus doesn't have a list at home world tricky but i mean you still stumped me i didn't know that so. yeah <laughs> well, now you do um i'm trying to think i think were any of the handmaidens in the clone wars yes but not like Sabe, who would be... Yeah, that'd be a good one. Sabe, or any of the Handmaidens, really, but I think Sabe could have gotten a, a kind of cool arc. I don't know. It, a lot of these are, like, in hindsight, who would have been... I know Apo Rancisis was going to start popping up more and more. Really? They designed his lightsaber. I do uh, want to see him fight with a lightsaber. He's like a snake man, right? Yeah. How does he fight? 
Oh, he has arms. I'm a snack. I'm a snack. <laughs> <laughs> he still has arms. <laughs> we should do canned wine every week. I'm not. I'm that or or I've my had ties. like this much. I've had most of my my tie. <laughs> it's hot in here. It is. Hot. It's hot. I'm gonna keep drinking. Gotta stay hydrated. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ooh, uh, Chad said we need to check out C. It's on Apple TV. I don't. I don't think I've heard of that. C. S E E. Oh, that's the one I was talking about the other day with uh, Jason Momoa and Dave Bautista, who are apparently. See, Jason Momoa just had a new Netflix show come out, so that's confusing for me. Well, Jason Momoa is kind of like the Rock in the sense that I feel like he just doesn't stop working. He's in so much stuff, but I was talking about how. I really love that Dave Bautista and Jason Momoa are friends. Only because, like, of the... I don't even know if you would call it drama, but the fact that they were both up for the role of Drax. And then Jason Momoa got it for a while, and then I forget what happened because that was so long ago. But he then lost the role, and then Dave Bautista got it. But now they're in Dune together, and they're in C together, and then they're like, let's do a, a buddy cop let's show. Let's be best friends. Yeah, they're, they're apparently getting a buddy cop show that takes place in Hawaii. Like, that's it's like just Hobbs a, and Shaw. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, Except it's going to be better than Hobbs and Shaw. I just really like, no. <laughs> no? <laughs> no, that, that, that movie, well, I don't know why I immediately Is defended. Is that reckless to say? I, I don't, don't know, I didn't see Hobbs I don't know why Shaw. I immediately defended the Fast and Furious <laughs> franchise. Because uh, you like it, which I is do. fair. I do. I watched it on airplane, and it was fine. I do want to see Free Guy. Daryl brought up Free Guy, and I, I I've don't heard know. it's good. I, I'm surprised. I mean, like, it I looked see it. it looked charming enough. We've waited this long to not go into a movie theater just because of movies getting released at home for, like, extra money, which is way too tempting for me to turn down. Yeah. Well, Shang-Chi, they're not doing that. So... I really do want to see that. Is that how you say it? Yeah. Oh. There's a, they actually released a clip of him telling Aquafina's character how to pronounce his name. Shang-Chi. In the movie. Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi. Okay. And I probably just well, still butchered it, but it's an Classic and white person a. move. Yeah. To Shang-Chi. Yeah. That's how I've been saying it. Okay. That's not well, correct. We all learned something. Well, not all of us, but we learned something just now. Uh, so... I do want to see that. Yeah. And it's got great reviews so far. Simu Liu, who is also going to be in Star Wars Visions. Yes. Uh, but also Kim's Convenience, which is wonderful. But Watch I Watch Kim's Convenience. I, I want to talk to uh, Paul Sun Young Lee again, because the first time I interviewed him, I was like, do you and Simu have like a rivalry where you're like, I'm in Star Wars. And he's like, I'm in the MCU. But now he's also in Star Wars. So like... We gotta get Paul into the MCU. Yeah. <laughs> Which, I mean, that shouldn't be that hard. We can do it. Well, shocking no one, I missed some pieces. <laughs> um, I was seeing people, or articles say that like, oh, depending on how Shang-Chi does in the box office, we'll know whether or not we need to push the Eternals and I was like, "Oh, come on, guys!" Like Black Widow did really well. Well, I don't. I'm I'm not a <laughs> box office person, but like, it made a lot of money on streaming. Like, just do that again. I think that they're going to see how Shang Chi does, and then they'll decide if they're going to go strictly theater or keep it mixed. I mean, well, I I want to say that they they should be making up the difference by charging $30, but then it's, that's per account, per, household, per, per yeah. household. So I don't know, like I might even pay $40, $45 if I'm really con that concerned and want to watch a movie from home. I would pay even like a little bit more money, I think, to, to, to be able to watch it from home. But yeah, it just sucks right now. Go get vaccinated. <laughs> So we can have movies come out normally and make their money and theaters can stay in business. Just do it. Agreed. Just do it. Oh, there we go. All right, there's one piece. All right. Let's move on. Fernando Gonzalez, 
thanks for the super chat. Hey, what's your take on the section about deep fakes on the gallery? Is I was surprised Lucas, they went into all that. Is Sorry. this Lucasfilm saying they'll try to avoid it or just use it more carefully? I thought this was really interesting because I do think... I think this is their way of saying we want to try to avoid this in the future. But it's obviously like this amazing technology which they did also talk a lot about how it's just going to get continue to get better and better but i liked how they went into the idea of like specifying when it's being used and when it's not being used like john favreau was like if the technology can get to the point where it's indistinguishable the technology should also get to the point where we can confidently give you a yes or no on whether or not something is real or fake yeah and the and all the stuff he said about using it responsibly is very important and i think a lot of people just kind of glaze over that fact yeah and i don't even know that much about deep fake stuff I, I learned a lot about how it works today um I'm, I'm glad they talked about it yeah it did feel a bit like we know this is dangerous, so we're gonna like talk about how we know it's dangerous. But I don't know. I didn't get the sense that that meant they were gonna stop using it and they, developing it. They definitely did not say that. But and I don't know. I don't know if they should. I'm just like. I think John Favreau was hinting at the 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 idea that like it's it can be a slippery slope, mm -hmm. and he knows that as a filmmaker. Now, he's not part of Lucasfilm. He's his own person. So who knows what Lucasfilm wants to do in the future considering deepfake technology. But I like that they kept it in there that it, it can be a slippery slope and you know, you should do it responsibly. Don't, probably shouldn't run with it <laughs> too much i'm glad they talked about it but i don't know it, it it's it still felt a little corporation-y of me of dis it, it's it felt like disney being like hey just like say something about how we know it's a little irresponsible but so the i, I just saw someone in the chat someone explain what's with the deep fakes so deep fake is just the name for the technology of using AI to filter through previously used footage to then create a fake facial structure so that that can be used. So they basically used that for young Luke Skywalker. They took a bunch of old footage, some like archival footage and like even some stuff from like interviews that was really well lit they feed it into this ai i did like one thing. of those, those interviews that came up where it was mark hamill saying like and you just trust the visual effects guys that it's gonna look good in the end yeah you just feed it into this ai thing and it kind of like spits out whatever facial am I trying to say facial positions that it, it thinks yeah. it needs for the scene basically we all we both learned all of that today about how deep fakes worked yeah I I don't like the name deep fake first of all yeah second of all I feel like it it is um, some dangerous technology it's just one of those things where, like, down the line, it's going to become Photoshop. Where, like, even just, yeah, my parents can't use Photoshop yeah. easily, but, like, anyone our age and older are probably going to be, like, yeah, yeah, we can deepfake anything, and that's got some consequences. That's the thing. Like, people could take footage of us from this channel and deepfake us into looking like we're saying anything. Right. Which is terrifying. Exactly. 
but... Why are you giving people ideas? I'm just gonna do this for... That's why I, I try to stare like this the whole time. For the foreseeable future, I'm gonna just... Now you can only get me saying something from the front. Shoot, I just turned! <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Um, yeah. I forget where I was going with that. <laughs> Deep fakes, cool, but scary. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, I'm glad they addressed scary. it. I did, okay, one more thing. I did really enjoy Peyton Reed talking about working with Robert Zemeckis on cool. the early 90s deepfakes from Forrest Gump. Yeah. I thought that was really interesting. I well, think I think Peyton said he was on the behind the scenes team talking to the visual effects people, whatever, that's what. <laughs> They were just talking yeah. about it. They didn't call it deepfake, but it was the, the same basic technology cool. from when they were making like J JFK look like he was talking to Forrest Gump or, you know, that oh, stuff. And that's something that I hadn't considered until today is uh, when Peyton Reed was like, yeah, I used this technology on Ant-Man 2 and Ant-Man 1. And I was like, oh, that's right, he did. So that makes a lot of sense why they brought him on for that specific episode to, to go in and do the Luke Skywalker stuff. I was like, oh yeah, because he knows what he's doing. He has experience, and I just hadn't thought of that. Mm -hmm. <sighs> oh, Figrin Dan is maybe one of these. I'm sure he's one of them. Um, I was going to say one more thing about the deep fakes. Oh, just that I don't really like them. They still don't look very good to me, and... I, I, I agree. I'm still like, no thank you. Moving on. I, obviously, they're still crazy impressive, but it's still like... The second their mouths start to move, that's when I'm like, that's mm -hmm. not real. And it's still insane that they can pull off what they pulled off. What's this? It's a clue horn. But how do they hold it? The other way. I got it. Uh, help. <laughs> What's this one? This looks like a baton, a riot baton. Well, it's supposed to go like that, too. But I don't know. I think they're just okay. little instruments. Let me move on before we get too behind on Super Chats. Miranda here. Thanks for the Super Chat. Sorry I'm late. Pharmacy delays. No worries. Why do you think they didn't discuss Luke's new musical theme in the episode? Do you think we could get another episode about the music of season two? They briefly covered just the fact that there wasn't any music from the original trilogy up until the point where we see Luke, but... <sighs> Did he have, like, a completely new theme? No, because it's it... been a while since I've <laughs> watched the episode, but... I thought it was mostly Grogu's theme and the... I'm trying to remember what this theme was, but it was like... Da -da, da -da, ba -da 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 -da. Like, was that Luke's theme? I thought they'd used that before. I am the wrong person to ask. Where's Xanthi? Star Wars Music Minute, help! <laughs> um... I don't think we're going to get another episode of, like, behind-the-scenes episode until maybe the season or the the series is done and then I think it would be cool to like see Oh Ludwig. no, I think they'll do one per season. All about just the music? Oh, about the music, then just, no. Yeah, just about the music. I think when the the series is over, I think it would be cool to do to have them do like a behind the scenes and just have people talk about the music, specifically Ludwig because I was he's excellent. I was kind of bummed that this time around for season two it was just one episode and then one episode about just luke like i loved the first season of the gallery where it was like six episodes eight episodes something where it was yeah one's on the music one's on technology one's on characters like i really loved that i get why it's not feasible and why you'd only do that for like your first big disney plus series um but 
I did miss having that, like, it's a fun, when the season is over, then you get to watch, like, another eight weeks of content for it. It's like, I miss the show, but I'm still kind of getting stuff. But, yeah. like, they're about to get to a point where, potentially in 2022, we might have a new Star Wars episode every single week. So, it, so it doesn't make sense. So many live streams. <laughs> it doesn't make sense to do that for every series. So many fun guests, too. We keep telling people that, that we have come as guests on live streams that like uh they're like oh thanks for having me and like we got plenty more shows to talk yeah, about yeah. i'm sure we'll bring a lot of people back and we'll have a lot of new folks on it's it's very exciting i i feel like we needed a good solid vacation to get over the bad batch live streams just just because they were on fridays and like friday evenings too like it just we were so tired by the think, end of the day on friday that we're happy about the wednesday move yeah we were we were just so exhausted by the end of the day on friday that we were like okay take this nice break from I doing do. live shows my initial thought live streams for the shows but my initial thought was that like it was fun to have that like end of the week friday thing to look forward to but hopefully things start to go back to normal and we will have weekends to look forward to again um but i'm 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 pretty pumped about the wednesday move now yeah because yeah, I don't want the fact that it's on a Friday to deter my excitement for doing the live streams. Sometimes I would just be so burnt out by the end of the week that I'd be like, okay, let's talk about Bad Batch. But like, also, most of the shows that are next, next up in line, I'm like, heck yeah, I'm ready to gush about whatever happens on screen bad batch i was like yeah okay it's 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 pretty good it's well, better than i expected i mean there's only so much you can say about any show and after 16 episodes <laughs> yeah it's a, it's a lot which andor is gonna have 12 episodes but we were talking today about like i'm excited to see what tony gilroy who has publicly said that he doesn't care about star wars like, I mean, he he cares. He's not going to come in and just be like, whatever. But that he doesn't really know much about the universe. I'm like, that's good that we have this Favreau Filoni show with people who really, really care. But then we can see something from the opposite end of the spectrum who's like, I'm here to do this. I'm going to make a spy show. Yeah. And I don't know what characters I should include. And sure, the story group is going to help me, but he he doesn't have in the back of his mind that, like, oh, Bail Organa should be in this. Like, he just wants to make a cool spy show. I mean, and, Jimmy Smith should oh, yeah, be. Yeah, I hope that Bail Organa's in it, but that's something that the story group would be like, hey, if you want this kind of character, Jimmy Smith's is perfect for you. Yeah. And he's already in the They universe. already exist. Here they are. Which is how... Saw Gerrera got pulled into Rogue One, mm -hmm. where they were like, okay, we want this extremist character who's like outside of the rebellion, but used to be part of it. And they were like, boom, Saw Gerrera. And they were like, yes, perfect. So I'm, I'm excited for more of that kind of thing. Yeah, this kind of spawned off of you bringing up someone else saying that would The Mandalorian have been as good of a show to all of us if it weren't a Star Wars show. Right? Yeah. And, and we I mean, were it talking leans... about how, like, some of the, the tropes that they use and, like, the characters that they use, like, had it not been a Star Wars show, it might have been kind of corny. I mean, maybe. It's like Star Wars is so just ingrained in us, and... I don't know, like, I'm someone who, I, I see people being like, oh, they're leaning too hard on nostalgia and what we already know about Star Wars. I'm like, so? 
That's Star uh, Wars has done a lot of that, and it will continue to yeah, do that. Yeah, and it's it's fun. Uh, like I remember when Rogue One came out, and I think it was Red Letter Media who was like railing about like ATSTs and like, oh, they used a thing that I know already, and I'm like, yeah, but it makes sense for it to be there. Like mm-hmm. Star Wars is its own beast, so but we it so gets a pass. I only bring that up because we were talking about how Andor could be just a really good spy show that happens to be in the world of Star Wars. It's kind of like, I don't know, like Rogue One to me is a really good movie and it happens to be in Star Wars. And I think that's why a lot of people really like Mm -hmm. it. I mean, yes. I mean, it's a a war movie. There's a lot of stuff in there that's like, hey, it's Tarkin, hey, it's the Death Star, look at this, look at this. But it's also just a really freaking good movie. And I think a lot of people who aren't as big of Star Wars fans as us are like, yeah, Rogue One was awesome. Because it's it's just got good movie stuff. Yeah. It's a bad way to say it. but No, no, I get what you're saying. But and, I think, and I think Andor it could also be that. Like, it could just be a really cool spy movie that happens to be set in Star Wars. Well, like, I love that we're in a position that we get both. That we get uh, The Mandalorian and now also all of these, like, spin-off shows that are going to be building towards the same thing. Those are probably going to be very Star Wars fan-centric. Especially with, like, the Bad Batch Mount Tantus thing that recently happened. It's like, th- this stuff might all be for those people who have, you, you know, you don't have to have read Heir to the Empire, but if you did, it's going to mean that much more to you, and I love that we get that, but I like that there's so much Star Wars happening that we're also getting stories by Tony Gilroy, who doesn't know any of that stuff, and he's just trying to do this other thing, and it's, there's something for everyone, and I love that. Uh, it's... Uh, I was talking to someone recently who was just talking about how Star Trek used to be... The music is loud. The music is loud? That's a little late. (laughs) Well, they're saying this track is specifically loud. Oh, okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but... (laughs) Just just the fact that Star Wars... Or Star Trek is what this person said, uh, was like a numbers game where it was all TV shows for a while and it was all episodes and... You know, if you didn't like that episode, whatever, move on to the next one. Star Wars, for a long time, was like, there's these three movies, and like a couple cartoons and the Ewok movie, sure. And now there's three more movies, and it's like, you got six things, and some people didn't like three of those things, and it was like, well, tough luck. Mm-hmm. But now Star Wars is in a place where it's it, it, it's more of a numbers game, and if you didn't like that thing, you'll probably like this thing, and I like that. Okay, I can go turn the music down. Are you done? With this, almost. Are, are you done with your soapbox? Yes. What is a soapbox? I don't know. I don't get it's that. Something you stand on. We should get an actual soapbox. Is it <laughs> so a box that, that soap when one of us, comes in? I, I think that was the My initial idea. My soap comes idea. in bottles. <laughs> we should get a soapbox. And then if I ever start doing that, you can just start pointing at that. And I can decide if no, I either no, no. want to stand on it no, no, no. or I get stop. The, I want to get the Oscars music on my phone and I'll, I'll start playing it. <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. I need to move on. You no longer get to tease me about this, a.k.a. Floof. Uh, knows Star Wars Explained won't play Lego Star Wars 3. We'll see about that. But we will play Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. <laughs> thank th- thank you for the super chat. Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga in 2022? Question mark. More time for Lego Star Wars 3. That's true. You're not wrong. We should find the time. We should just do it. I, Especially I in the build up been, to it when we have an actual release date. Yeah, I've been excited to play another Star Wars Lego game for a while. We might as well play one that we haven't yeah. played yet. So. That might just be the kick in the pants that we needed. <laughs> we just needed a release date. Babbles the Clown, thanks for your super <laughs> chat. Howdy, I'm late. Spider-Man No Way Home trailer thoughts. Oh yeah, let's get back into Spider-Man. Yeah, you made me stop earlier. Uh, but real, let me see if 
any of these other super chats can be done quickly. And we'll get back to Spider-Man. Bill Rudd with a super chat. Frog Lady trivia. In which Mandalorian episode does the fan does this fan favorite amphibian first appear? I know. Frog Lady was in which episode first? Two episodes before Bo Katan. No. Three episodes? Nope. Five episodes. She's in season one. You're just naming numbers now. That doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Okay. Uh, when did she come in? She is in... Well, hold on. Let's see if I can walk you to it. Where does she first appear in season two? On what planet? Uh-huh. So if she's in season one. Cantina? Uh-huh. She in the Dr. Mandibles episode? That's Is Dr. Mandibles in the episode? He might be. The the one where he's named Dr. Mandibles is in the first one where she really appears, where we know her as Frog Lady. But she's basically a background extra in season one. Oh. In uh the Gunslinger episode. Oh. With Toro Calican, hmm. Steel Wars' favorite character for some reason. We need to go back through and rewatch these and like do. We could do like really good reaction pa Patreon video. Uh, well, obviously they wouldn't be our first reactions, <laughs> but we could like talk through them. And it might be kind of fun. Although we've already done commentaries on them. Anyways, we should rewatch The Mandalorian. I would love to do that. Um, Ricardo Franco, thanks so much for the super chat. Just says, what's up, guys? Hope all is well. Hi, Ricardo. Hey, Ricardo. Thanks for joining the stream. It's mostly good. As you know, our uh, air conditioning is broken. But, <laughs> well, not broken. It's just old. Um, another super chat I'm going to read before we go into Spider-Man talk. It's from Dan Ritter. Thanks so much, Dan. Okay, but when is the Out of the Shadows book club? Uh, parentheses, my not-so-subtle commercial for joining the star wars explained patreon oh thank you uh tuesday Soon. our plan is tuesday yes which means i gotta get to reading you're about halfway through it <laughs> no no i've only got i'm on chapter 28 okay i don't know how many chapters there are in i'm it. i'm in to the uh on the audiobook i think i've got two hours left okay you can do it um but i read it like two months ago yeah so i need i need to refresh my memory and uh bill red i will get to your super chat here shortly but i'm gonna go back to babbles the clown spider-man no way home trailer thoughts because we because we didn't do a reaction or an explain it to me on this we probably have a lot more to say about it than normal so i thought it was really cool and exciting However, I miss the smaller scale Spider-Man world. Um, like everything in the MCU is this huge feeling and like Doctor Strange is gonna be in this and it's got the multiverse and we're going like super big with everything, which is cool. Eh, I, I miss your, your neighborhood, friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. They might still do a little of that like at the start. I hope well, they do. I don't know how they would. <laughs> and, you know, people have said that, like, oh, we might get Miles Morales, and that'll be, mm. like, our neighborhood, friendly neighborhood Spider-Man story. But, like, I don't know. Miles Morales' Spider-Man deserves to be just as big as Tom Holland's Spider-Man. But I, I just don't want Doctor Strange to overshadow spider-man in his own movie he will like i i think it might start out with uh oh well we messed this spell up and i'm gonna go figure out how to fix it uh you hold down the fort peter and then while <laughs> while dr strange is gone like all this multiverse stuff happens i don't know um and there's also people saying that like oh that's that's not dr strange 
Let that, I would love to hear some chat thoughts on whether That's or not, not Doctor Strange. People are saying that he's acting weird, and is it Mephisto or is it like? No. I, I think it's just Doctor Strange, but he's, I'd love to. I want to hear some chat thoughts on this. He, do you know how much work Stephen Strange had to do to find that one scenario? What out scenario? of all of them, oh, yeah. where they win against. Well, yeah, that was Doctor Strange. Yeah, so I'm saying he deserves a vacation. He deserves to be in his comfy pants and to be snowed in or whatever. Uh, but even you had this question of why Why is he doing this spell? And I think that it makes perfect sense for me that well, he still is... cocky. Exactly. He's still fairly new to the MCU. I think it's fine if he's just like, yeah, Wong, I won't do the spell. I can do the spell. Don't worry, Peter, I'm doing the spell. Like... I, I like the fact that he's cock and I, I really need to rewatch the first Doctor Strange movie because I do not know his character very well. So He's a cocky people, butthole. When yeah, when people were talking more about Doctor Strange's character, I was like, Oh, okay, then that makes sense. He's like I don't have to do this, but it's an interesting thing that you bring up. Peter and I really want to try to do it and so, Wong's telling me I can't do it or mm -hmm. shouldn't do it so that makes me want to do it even more. Yeah like it, it makes me jump back to there's a scene in the first Doctor Strange movie where he's just a surgeon just a surgeon he's a surgeon and uh, th they're like you can't do this and he's like freaking watch me and he goes in and does neural surgery or whatever uh, and he does it without a camera I can't he does something really crazy and they're like, you're gonna kill the guy. And he's like, no, I won't. And he goes and he does it. And he, it's like amazing. But like, he could have killed the guy. Yeah, he's being, that's a very reckless move yeah, for a doctor. Yeah, he's reckless and cocky. And now he's a reckless and cocky sorcerer. <laughs> like, I think Doing that this. he, he got some this. credit in the Avengers movies uh, because he was sat down next to Stark, who is like another level of reckless and cocky. But I think... Stephen Strange is probably still on that level of like, no, I can do this and I will do this. So hold on a second now. Um, Jesse in the chat says, to be fair, Mephisto just got revealed to be Norman becoming Green Goblin in the comics. What? <laughs> okay, well we don't know anything about the comics, so that's really interesting. <laughs> I love that. Um. It would be great if Mephisto shows up at some point, but I don't think it's going to be in this movie. <laughs> now everyone's like, we need Mephisto after WandaVision. <laughs> but yeah. those are my thoughts on Doctor Strange. I think it makes perfect sense that he would try to do that spell. Yeah. I just, I think about the, the other spider, the other two Spider-Man movies, and I'm like, we got lots of Peter, we got a lot of his, like, stuff at school, mm -hmm. a lot of MJ, but this one, it's like, you see a lot of Peter and Doctor Strange fighting on this crazy multiplying train. I mean, that's just, and I bet a lot of that was from- Look, it's Doc Ock from this other movie, which is cool. Oh yeah, I'm super psyched about that. But what's I, MJ like, doing? I'm, uh, I mean, it's a trailer. We didn't see the whole movie. I know, well, it was a and, teaser too. Yeah, so. and, and I think that the, the train thing and all the trippy New York stuff, I think that was probably them doing the spell. I think a bunch of crazy stuff happens while they're doing the actual spell and then they wind up back in the sanctum and they're like, whoa, that was weird. All right, well, off we go. Hmm. And then they step outside and, oh, Dr. Octopus is here or whatever. But I think a lot of that stuff that we saw in the trailer was probably from like the first 20 minutes. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure MJ will be a part of the movie, but like, I do agree with you that what makes the Sam Raimi movies work so well, especially to is watching him try to balance his real life, Peter Parker with Spider-Man. And mm -hmm. it's impossible to do, but that's what makes it so relatable, is you want him to be able to do both. Which, 
so that does play into this movie because now everyone knows Peter is Spider-Man and he's like, well, this is messing up everything in my mm -hmm. life and I need this to be undone. So I think it's, he's, I think he's going to put up a good argument for Steven to help him out and Steven. I'm and, on a, and Steven will see some first name Steven. Basis. I know we keep calling him Steven. Well, Peter's allowed to call him Steven. So, so are we. It's weird, Whatever. but we'll allow I just it. think uh, Daredevil's in this trailer. Are we going to drop Daredevil and... now? <laughs> I, think, I think we need Daredevil in this more than anyone else. Because he's a great lawyer. That I, I, would, I would love Daredevil to be in this, but that does make me wonder if people are going a little bit too crazy with their expectations, where it's like... No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't want people to get disappointed where it's like they get everything they want. It's like Doc Ock is in this and Norman Osborn's Green Goblin and uh, Jamie Foxx's Electro and the Lizard's back and Sandman and uh, what else? Oh, and Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire. Like Tommy the whole Maguire's gang's here. In it. That's all you want. The whole gang's here, but Daredevil wasn't in it. And so this movie That sucks. scene where Doc Ock says, hello, Peter, he is saying that to Tobey Maguire. Prove me wrong. Everyone you can't. that. Everyone thinks that. I haven't seen it. You were talking Who's about, talking about You were talking that? about hot takes. That's not a hot take. I don't see people talking about this online. I've seen it. That's a common <laughs> theory. <laughs> no. People people in <laughs> no the one people in the that. chat are going to tell you that everyone thinks that. <laughs> I don't look at Twitter enough to know what as a common you theory. You look at Twitter more than I do. No, I do not. I may look at it, but I don't read it. Just stare at it. It doesn't. It goes in one eyeball and and out the back of my head. Anyways, see, Babbles the clown says Molly's the first person to ever say that. Boom. I'm done talking. Okay. So you look dumb right no, now. No, this also means leave. Disturbing the dog. That's why I stopped. Uh, okay. <laughs> Where the hell are we? What time is it? It's 7.17. Okay. We gotta go, like, right I can at 7.30. Finish this. I can finish this. <laughs> Not the whole thing, but this bag. Oh, okay. Uh, Bill Rudd, thank you for your super chat. Have you ever seen Dr. David West Reynolds Archaeology of Indiana Jones presentation. His stories on Blast Points this week were mind blowing. I have not, but I saw Blast Points tweeting about that and I have it on my to listen to list because That's, it sounds awesome. Sounds like something you'd be into. It, it does. And I would really like to listen to it. But no, I have not yet. That uh, so someone way earlier in the chat, I don't even know if they're in the chat anymore, asked if I had listened to the, the Lord of the Rings BBC audio drama, and I have not, but I, I definitely will before the show comes out. <laughs> because the, it sounds cool, and everybody was talking about how great it was. Lindsay Brown says, canned wine has fermented. Well, if it <laughs> has, it's getting tastier. <laughs> Getting better by the second. I finished my Mai Tai. It's so good. I had one of those. I had, well, no, I had a couple of sips of one of those when we first got them, and I didn't think they were that good. I think they're pretty good. But that was right after having the Mai Tais at Trader Vic's, which are like the best. Okay. Mai Tai snob over here. I'm sorry. We have a Trader Vic's within. 45 minutes of us so we can go get my like the best Mai Tais ever and yet we've only ever done it once Thanks to Ben Bateman he Maybe came we'll to go town. again. Maybe we'll go again at Dragon Con. Oh, please. It actually might not be like if it's not that, that crowded amazing. We might be able to do it. I'm down for it. Even if we just like went to the bar anyways <laughs> Uh Caleb Diaz has another super chat. Speaking of MCU, you two should watch The Shield, best show. Not The Shield. The Shield? Sorry, Shield. <laughs> I'm, I'm, why is Michael Chiklis not covered in rocks in this show? What? 
because he was also the thing in the Fantastic Four. I know that. Yeah, and Michael Chiklis is in The Shield. Oh, but The Shield doesn't have anything to do with Fantastic Four. I was making a joke. We watched... <laughs> You're going to get us a, a strike, a copyright strike. Um... I lost my train of thought. Agents of Shield. <laughs> yeah, I we saw the first like half of the first season. I would like to watch that. I think. Eh, I'm good. Okay, well then I'll watch it. I'm I'm like I feel spoiled by the MCU where I'm just like I don't think I have the attention span for Agents of Shield, the TV show. I don't really care about Agent Coulson. I know people would probably slander my name all over the internet for saying that, but I don't care. I'm going to get a lot of use out of this music, I think. <laughs> I did like... We said we didn't have any hot takes. I did like... Okay, well, I was wrong. Uh, I did like him in the What If episode today, but that was the only thing I liked about that episode was Agent Coulson. The, the rest of the episode was meh. I think the... Last week's episode, What If T'Challa Was Star-Lord? That's my favorite one so far. Yeah, that one was really good. The first one was pretty good, too. The but first was... one was just too similar, in my opinion, to like what actually happened. Yeah. I, I couldn't help but feel in the first episode, I was like, okay, but like, why is Steve still even here? Like, right. oh, okay, they put him in the suit, I get it, whatever. But like... I wanted like a um, Captain Carter only <laughs> episode, sure. but I, I did still like that they had kind of a relationship, and I mean I liked I, think, I liked yeah. their repertoire. Repertoire. Yeah. Rapport. Repertoire. I can't help that I'm fancy, <laughs> and you're not. Dang it. Uh, Agents, Agents, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. gets so much better after the Winter Soldier tie-in. Oh, okay. Season 4 of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is some of the best TV ever watched. I mean, I remember hearing... Lavender Thor is best Thor. Lavender Thor. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I remember... All the We kind of stopped... We watched it... Or good. stopped watching it after a few episodes, and then when... Yeah, it is the Winter Soldier. I remember reading that one of the characters was Hydra. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Like, that feels like that, you know, the dollhouse moment yeah. where like the show goes from, this is okay, to like, oh, dang, this show got great. Mm -hmm. That is probably when that is. See, I, this could just be that I am not a huge MCU fan. I, I like a lot of the MCU, but as, like when, when Hank Pym, showed up and this what if what if episode what i was just F? like oh well what is happening I what if it. more like as if no what if <laughs> i just got bored with it that's that happens pretty easily with me well so. that's like and I, I said this to you earlier but i think that's what's fun about this show is that yeah some some of the scenarios you're not gonna like and oh. some you will. And in what if Coulson said dead Thor smelled like lavender? Oh right. I did like his everyone's his infatuation with like it looks really good. Yeah, that's and his password being like Steve Steve Steve. Yeah. Oops, seeing sorry. seeing uh, Hulk blow up that was just kind of disturbing. I did not like that. I I love Bruce Banner's character, so seeing that I was a little turned off. Yep. By that I was like, mm, I don't that like was that. too much. I don't want to. I know see. that was the point of the episode. I don't what if they all died? But why did he have to die like that? I was like, for a second, I had like flashbacks to um, what was that really gory animated show that you watched about all the superheroes? Invincible. Yeah, I had immediate flashbacks of Invincible 
when that happened and I was expecting like blood and guts to go everywhere and then it didn't I was like oh yeah I guess they probably won't yeah. do that but it was still like oh, it, hard to see yeah it, like he just blew up it was like, enough popped up like a big green balloon no thank you pass Um, let me get that soapbox back out for uh -oh. Alex. J Bell, thanks for the super chat. Why does Alex like Big so much? I can do this without being soapboxy. I think. <laughs> Just kidding. I feel like I've practiced this enough. Uh, so Big's dark lighter represents kind can of an you, introduction. Can you do this in five minutes? Yeah, I can do it in less than that. I can do it in three minutes. Not that I have to. But, uh, Big's dark lighter represents kind of my introduction into not just the Star Wars expanded universe, but um, the way that films are made. Like, I remember seeing pictures of him and his cape and that deleted scene with Luke Skywalker and being like, what is this? Like, they shot this and they didn't include it in the film. And this was probably all in 1997. Uh, I think that the added scenes in the special edition is what sparked all this. And then there was like a behind the magic CD-ROM game that you could go into and uh, learn about deleted scenes and unlock them and stuff. And I, I was just so blown away that they would shoot something for the movie and not include it. And I didn't know why. So that all helped me learn about movie making a little bit more and just I don't know, that knowledge of like, oh, that's Luke Skywalker's childhood friend. That was probably one of the first like trivia facts that I ever learned. Uh, and all of that is kind of in hindsight, but so I, I just always had an affinity for the character. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have said, if you asked me when I was uh, 10, I wouldn't have told you that Biggs was my favorite character, but then growing up and we got a, a dog together and I was like, I always thought Biggs would be a good name for a dog. It is a good name. Yeah, for and so that was our dog's name, and then I was just kind of like, I've, I've always liked Biggs. You know what? He's my favorite character, like, kind of as a joke, and then it just stopped becoming a joke, <laughs> where I am like, if Biggs shows up in something, I get excited about it. And, but he does mean a lot to me, uh, just as a Star Wars fan, as a movie fan. How was that? It's, it's pretty good. Did you time me? No. That was like two minutes. Minute and a half. Crushed it. Is, it? <laughs> uh, is that Terra Bay? Hmm? Ter <laughs> Someone said now do Cobb Vanth. Now do I'm trying Cobb to... Vanth. <laughs> Cobb Vanth is just like... So who was your favorite character before Biggs? That's oh, before probably Biggs. Luke. Uh, no, it was probably Han. It was really? like, yeah, it was Han one of those. Han over Luke? Han's a jerk. Han's the cool guy. No, it was one jerk. of those, like, you know, when you say, like, who I think I am versus who I really am. I was like, you know, in, ten, in fourth grade. How old was I? I was like, yeah, Han's so cool. He's the cool guy. But still, even back then, I was probably C-3PO. I would not have dated you if you acted like Han. Well, I'd never acted like him. Or if I knew that he was your favorite character. That's not true. <laughs> That's a fickle reason. <laughs> Once a 3PO, always a 3PO. That's probably true. <laughs> um, Cobb Vanth, I, I just, it was something that I didn't think they'd ever do. And that's why, like, that's a new thing that excites me is that you know what Cobb Vanth means that any book character that I read about like I could see that person on screen someday and that's super neat <laughs> super neat uh huh that's it that's all there is about Cobb so let's see who do I I'm collecting big stuff I'm collecting Cobb Vanth stuff I'm collecting uh, General Merrick stuff Wrecker. Uh, Wrecker. General Merrick is just blonde bigs uh so th that's easy. Um, Wrecker's a giant himbo, and I love him. Uh, and Max Rebo plays the Red Ball Organ, 
and I also play the piano. So that's why I got Max Rebo stuff. So those are all my main characters, I, I think. Kind of, I kind of have a thing for, not a thing, but like, I kind of really like Biggs's character also, but mine is way different because he looks a lot like my dad. Oh yeah. When he was a lot young. It's just like the really dark hair and dark mustache. My dad rocked that look. And Biggs looks like a young my dad. He does. <laughs> he always gave me dad vibes. And I was like, why do you have to die? Ugh. Anyways. No Hauser. Well, D Hauser doesn't have any merch yet that we know of. Except for maybe hair gel. Ballast. There's a you can get an action figure of Ballast, who is Hauser, but oh. under a different name. Um, Sneaky. So there is some Hauser stuff we could get. I do like him a lot. Um, we should probably wrap up soon. I'm trying to finish this bag. Maybe you can do it before our guests arrive. I'll try. We're having guests over. That Mark guy is coming back over. We're having a, a that Templin Institute person. We're having a dinner party, like classy adults. We're gonna drink even more wine uh -oh. and grill on our grill. Mark <laughs> calls it a barbecue, but barbecue is what you eat off of a grill or a smoker, I guess. But he kept calling it a barbecue at the pool house, and I was like, it's called a grill. Not in Canada. But I, what do I know? I don't use the grill very often, so. Are we going to dress up? No, we are not. It's I'm too hot. basically this. <laughs> if you missed the beginning of our stream, our air conditioning is working, but not very well. So it's like 87 degrees in the upstairs of our house which is where we are now the downstairs is cooler so our guests won't hopefully die of heat stroke but preferably yeah uh Theral, i will not be on a certain point of view so fun story not not fun story though it's pretty boring actually uh our, something happened with our Comcast internet and like only one internet hole works. <laughs> An, one of our internet holes broke. <laughs> I just you know how it is. I just, I was gonna say port and I was like, no, I wanna call it an <laughs> internet hole. <laughs> we have four internet holes and only one of them works now. So we're getting a new internet maker. An internet maker. That has more functioning holes, I, I suppose. So, yeah. So there's no internet in my office right now, and so my computer doesn't have internet. Plus we're having guests over, but I will. Our whole house is falling apart. It's, we came back to an absolute disaster. <laughs> but you know what is not a disaster? Um, Hilo has been such a good boy. That's true. He's been the best boy. We've been training him, working with a trainer. He is back to sleeping in the crate at night, and he actually, I think he enjoys it. He sleeps better, more soundly throughout the whole night. And, and so do we. We sleep way better without an 85 pound dog in the bed, making it feel like we're just being kicked all night, but. Yeah. What do you mean making it feel like we are being we, kicked? We all were night. we were being kicked all night. Now it's like, oh my god, is this what having a solid night of sleep feels like? Who knew? Uh, Hilo was pretty good around Mark, but I think a lot of that had to do with his new training stuff. But <laughs> Harrison says, I miss the days when Hilo terrorized the streams. 
Yeah, he grew out of that even before training. Yeah. He was just, he became chill. He's just chilling under here like a good boy. Now, when people come to the house, he's going to lose his mind, but not quite as much as he used to because he's gotten better about that. <laughs> Lindsey Brown says he sleeps better imprisoned. Yeah, but he also will go, he went into the crate willingly today and was like sleeping in there while I was on the treadmill. Oh my God. How and we still let him way? up on the bed and on the couch and stuff, but don't tell our trainer that. I thought I was done and I have so many extra pieces here. Our guests are gonna be here and it's gonna be raining and we're not gonna be able to use the grill. He's in the zone. I'm, I'm flying through this now. <laughs> I mean, I have a lot of extra pieces here still, but. Yeah, Pup, uh, Babbles the Clown says, pups like having their own homes. I, I do, I am an avid believer that dogs are better off having crates, not because they can be put in them at any time, at any point, for hours at a time, but like, they know that they have a safe space. So like, once you properly crate train a dog, you can just leave the door open most of the time, they'll go in there and they'll know that that's their safe space. He's just... I gotta find where these... In the zone. ...extra pieces go. <laughs> there are always extra pieces. That is true. I'm not sure where we're going to put this set once it's done. It'll fold up. It'll be fine. Yeah, it'll fold up, but like it doesn't look like much unless it's all spread out and you can see all the little mini figs. We've got so many mini figs that are just sitting out here that don't have places to, to go yet. I'm, I mean, I'm sure we'll find places for them, but like, they're all just strewn about. Anyways. Will you give the crate a Star Wars name? Oh, like, Crate Dragon. <laughs> I mean, we want it to be a safe space, so. I like that, though. Yeah, Crate Dragon. That's that's the only Star Wars name I can think of for the crate. That is funny. That has a Star Wars meaning to it. Indoor bunker, Echo Base. Echo Base is funny. Echo Base is funny, because if he barks in there it might echo probably not crate salt <laughs> saltier than the crate no cuz he's not salty about being in there I don't know where these extra pieces go like a normal amount of extra pieces. Well, it's not, but these for sure shouldn't be here. I'll keep them out, and next week I'll probably run into something where I need them. That's the spirit. Yep. I'll just leave them out. Yeah. Probably, probably not load-bearing or anything. Where is that load-bearing? <laughs> I'm kidding. No, you're not. All right. <laughs> Are you happy you had this idea? I am, because when you need it the most, I'm going to play it. And well, you've you needed keep, it three times tonight. You keep so. playing it when I've, I've done talking. It's time to go. You, you were rushing us out. 
It's time to get ready for our guests. <laughs> All right, that's the end of today's stream. <laughs> oh man, thank you to everyone who joined us and thank you to everyone who sent in super chats. Uh, we wouldn't be able to do these streams without you guys, so really appreciate it. And glad that we're back. Me too. <laughs> what? You just have this smirk on your <laughs> face, and I don't understand why. Stop! I'm not doing anything! Okay. All right. We'll be... <laughs> I'm just gonna end the stream. Okay, bye! <laughs>